Hi guys, welcome back to another Matchbox Garage video. I'm Rob and today we shall be attempting to take this Dinky Toys Volvo 1800S from Shabby to Shiny. Uh, this one come courtesy of a recent unboxing from our friend Mark Can. Uh, thanks again Mark. And what I did on that unboxing was to ask you guys down in the comments section which one would you like to see, or at least which one would you like to see first? Uh, there was a, a bit of a two-horse race, to be honest. Uh, this one and, and the AMC Pacer, but uh, when I last looked, this one just seemed to uh, kind of edge it, and perhaps we'll still do the AMC Pacer anyway, but uh, look forward to that in, a, in an upcoming video. But yeah, onto this one. This is the one I really wanted to do. Uh, I think it's kind of just just right really for me to you know attempt the restoration and we'll do like a restoration plush plush a plus uh, even on this one but uh, beautiful casting i think you'll agree and uh, we'll start by drilling down the center of the post there is just one on this car and then uh, we'll remove that flange and tap that hole please do remember to lubricate the end of your piece you do not want to snap it And uh, yeah, not much of a, a, it's not really a free roller, this one. It has this, uh, I say, turning ability. It's not very good, but you can you can see the front wheels there just about turning. I must admit, I've already uh, pre-drilled this one, so probably didn't help at this uh, juncture anyway. But as you can see there, it does have a... A small amount of turning. Uh, of course it does read underneath Dinky Toys Meccano Limited made in England or Volvo 1800S uh, patent pending and uh, uh, model number 116 so you can see where it's uh, drilled there and it's got a tab on the rear holding it in. So we'll just pull up from the front and give it a little wiggle and there we are. Got a rusty old uh, suspension kind of piece in there but it's still doing its job and it does clean up later on, I promise you. And the beautiful wheels. You know, I've said it many times, you don't, they just don't make cars like this anymore. Unless they're those really expensive ones. I, I mean, these were probably expensive in their day anyway. But um, yeah, quite a lot of uh, moving parts. We've got the... Uh, bonnet piece there it says Volvo on the underside just in case The doors coming out nice chunky doors and has some uh, really lovely detail there with the window wiper This is one uh, classic I would love to own in real life Probably the most beautiful Volvo, uh, design-wise, any you know ever made, in my opinion, of course. Got the uh, window section there, reading Volvo. I wonder how many times this does read Volvo in each of these pieces. At the rear of the window section there, you can see it's I think melted. Something's perhaps landed on it, or not sure, but uh, quite deep actually. So we'll attempt to take that out and smooth it uh, later on. The bumpers here, made out of plastic, and uh, we'll just pop these out. There is a, a better method to this, which I'll show shortly, because uh, this method didn't actually work on the front bumper. But yeah, you can see the actual kind of chrome uh, paint just coming off in my hand there. So the bonnet opening you can see the engine bay. But in order to uh, get that bonnet off we first need to remove the front bumper, pop out the engine from under, underneath and then the, the bonnet. Now it was at this kind of uh, stage that I thought what am I doing wrong? Why is this bumper not coming out? And I uh, just come back after figuring it out in a second. It started to come, look, there's a little gap. 
But of course, this is old plastic, so I don't want to break anything. Or at least I try not to, anyway. And uh, yeah, figure it out relatively easy. You just get a pair of pliers there, just just very ever so slightly push those together, and it comes out nice and easy. Once you do have the uh, tabs kind of past the bodywork, you can then just work it out with your well, what I use the screwdriver in this instance. Nice uh, grill, grill detail there. A Volvo on the underside of the engine. And I think quite a nice uh, bit of detail. This is actually, of course, for 99.999% of its life, it's going to have been protected, so still in very good condition. So we'll keep that as it is. Uh, maybe add a little uh, extra chrome on top. Why not? And then the bonnet here. Maneuver it. So it doesn't damage. And there we go. Volvo underneath. And then there you go. Volvo again. How many Volvos were that? Uh, the one thing I didn't mention before going to the, uh, the caustic soda. This interior. Lovely detail. Lovely little... Uh, of course, it says Volvo underneath. Uh, yeah, lovely uh, steering wheel and the moving uh, chairs there. Now, I wanted to take the uh, tyres off so that I could remove the paint, you know, in the caustic soda. Uh, use some boiling water, which uh, cooled very quickly, just to kind of make the, the rubber a bit more malleable so I didn't break any wheels. Uh, there's one, two, three... Yeah, four... Didn't go so well that one. Um, you may or may not see there appear to be some kind of uh, manufacturing. That's my excuse anyway. Uh, kind of fault with this wheel, and just ever so slightly moving it, it bent. And of course, you know this is this is kind of a, a very thin metal. So once you bend it one way, you bend it the next. That's it. it it's gone. So we do need to find a replacement set of wheels today. But anyway, we do have the half, the six incher out with us today. To be honest, only because the foot long was really cloudy. So I thought, no, I don't want to be using that. And I'll, I need to uh, give it a thorough wash, I think. But uh, yeah, we filled it up with the uh, boiling water here. And then in comes two tablespoons of caustic soda. Uh, one thing I mentioned in a previous video was making sure to wear my rubber glove. If you look at the uh, colour of the water, you can see that the red paint is already starting to come away. And we'll let the uh, caustic soda solution there do its job. Look at that. Pretty violent, really, going on in there. Uh, whilst it is doing its bit, we'll uh, clean up the interior here. Just a little bit of soap and water. Same again with the engine piece. Yeah, they're okay as they are. The bumpers here, as the caustic soda solution cool off, I'll pop them in just before rinsing off. They only need 10 seconds or so. But we do need to, uh, say, dig out this burn mark in the back of the windscreen here. I've got quite a coarse uh, 
uh, sandpaper to start and then I'll work my way up and yeah this is a reminder of how brittle the old plastic can be barely put any pressure on it and it just snapped there so for the remainder I'll uh, concentrate off camera and try and get this polished up as best as we can so there you are probably 10-15 minutes later nicely polished on the front and we have probably 90% of that uh, burn mark out it goes really deep so I'm happy with you know as far as I want to take it without trying not to make any more uh, breakages and that little uh, break on the side we we glued back on and uh, we I think just about got away with that now the main cast in here was probably in the solution for up towards half an hour and like I say just the bumpers there just in the last 30 seconds to, to a minute and the majority of the chrome has come off there and I'll re-chrome those uh, later on got the doors, the bonnet and the boot the base there like I say we need to find a replacement set of wheels I left the, would you believe I left the wheels until assembly um, I got all the way through you know I've got thousands of castings so I knew I'd find something uh, trying to trying to get my fun there uh, in the picture for a hundred percent paint removal but uh, I need to have a little clean up of the water and uh, switch out to the to the wire attachment for my Dremel and this is how it come out with a little bit of a buff up we've got the pound shop primer going on here the uh, pound shop primer for the larger castings especially I just would never have used or going forward certainly I would never use anything different it may go on a little thicker but it just hides any imperfection it certainly doesn't hide any of the detail in my opinion so there we are And we are going with another uh, enamel today, a gloss red. And again, I use the uh, white spirit. Didn't go with a 50-50, probably more, um, I would say, 60% paint, 40% uh, white spirit for thinning. The one thing I've found, though, and which is why this video is an extra day or two later because I was planning on having this video out on Friday evening and then certainly by Saturday but it was still tacky the paint so I couldn't handle it and uh, needed another 24 hours to fully harden for me to uh, you know crack on with this video so I'm wondering whether it's this the white spirit instead of a true thinner uh, just takes that little bit longer to uh, to harden but anyway you've got the chrome bumpers there now same again with the engine piece and I've just put a little extra chrome on the top there you may or may not see the window section as we've seen and of course the cleaned up interior the wheels that I have found are from a yesteryear so we've got uh, some matchbox still within this dinky and uh, yeah the red is a beautiful red I'm sure you'll agree but uh, I'll put it together a few of those little details but a little reminder of what she looked like this is the result so around the front instantly what you can see is the uh, grill and the lights uh, those lights what I've done I kind of I guess back painted it with uh, chrome and then I used a UV glue on top uh, to kind of create like the the lens but the gold wheels against the red paintwork I think work really well they're the uh, right size and right width so they needed to be used today but yeah just some uh, chrome detailing on this one on the uh, lights and 
the badge there, the Volvo, trying to highlight that. Got a little bit of chrome in that door handle. My phone, I think, was struggling to really focus on this one. So shiny, I think that's why. That's what I'm saying to myself anyway. But but anyway, uh, big thanks to my patrons, um, including a returning lost patron, Big Deke there, Steve. Thanks a lot, mate. And uh, thanks everybody for watching. I do really appreciate it. Please do like, comment down below, and I'll see you shortly in the next video.